sun said shit done changed Ever since we was on, I dreamed it all Ever since I was young, they said I won't be nothing Now they always say congratulations Worked so hard, forgot how to vacation Change. Ever since we was on, I dreamed it all. Ever since I was young, they said I won't be nothing. Now they always say congratulations. congratulations. Worked so hard, forgot how to vacation.
trains ever since we was on our dream this oh, ever since I was young they said I won't be nothing now they always say congratulations work so hard forgot how to vacation they ain't never had the dedication people hating say we changing look we made it yeah we made it Ladies and gentlemen, the ceremony will begin in five minutes. Why, thank you, sir.
Ladies and gentlemen, the ceremony will begin in two minutes. Please be sure to silence all cell phones. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Georgia Military College Army ROTC 2023 Spring Commissioning Ceremony. This ceremony marks the 73rd commissioning ceremony at Georgia Military College since its recognition as a junior military college in 1952. I am Sergeant Major Andrew Porch, Chief Military Science Instructor, and your MC for today's event. The Military Science Department staff would like to thank you and welcome our distinguished guests, George Hogan, Lieutenant General William Caldwell IV, Major General Andy Manera, Colonel Retired Nelson Kraft, Colonel, Colonel Retired Tom Torrance, Colonel Craig Thompson, Colonel Steve Pitt, Mr. Brooks Snyder, Mr. Edwin Ehrman, elected officials, family, friends, and guests for attending this commissioning ceremony. Please rise for the entrance of the official party and remain standing for the invocation and honors to the nation. Ladies and gentlemen, the chaplain of Georgia Military College, Chaplain David Luke. Let us bow our heads for a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you again for the second watch of this day that you've, we've come to ask you to invoke your presence with us. Now, Lord, we ask that you come and cover these brave leaders. We come to celebrate, O oh God, their matriculation through another stage of their career. Father, before we send them out among many, we bless them individually as well as collectively. We give them the courage to keep their heads high. We give them the power, O oh God, to climb when they don't feel like climbing, to rise, O oh God, to every occasion, and to remember faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. In Jesus' name we pray. We say thank you. And our man.
Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. This ceremony marks the culmination of two years of intensive training and education in the areas of leadership development, military studies, and physical fitness. Georgia Military College offers an accelerated timeline compared to traditional ROTC programs. There are over 1,200 schools around the country that offer ROTC, and of those schools, Georgia Military College is one of only four military junior colleges in the nation. The cadets have completed their studies at Georgia Military College, and their success could not have been achieved without the love and support from their friends and family along the way. Without question, that support was critical in helping them arrive at this important milestone in their careers. Army commissioned officers are members of a unique fellowship that has spanned the history of our nation since the Army's inception, June 14, 1775, as the first branch of the American military services, from General George Washington and General Ulysses S. Grant to General Dwight D. Eisenhower and General James McConville, Army commissioned officers strive to compete every mission with dedication and excellence. They are entrusted with serving as a model of the Army values while they perform their leadership duties. They serve our nation with dignity and devotion. Commissioned officers are responsible for completing demanding missions while ensuring the welfare, morale, and professional development of the soldiers entrusted to them. Commissioned officers begin their Army service as young leaders, providing a blend of valuable skills and knowledge. With their self-discipline, motivation, confidence, sound judgment, and humility, officers use their problem-solving skills to determine solutions and accomplish the mission. As Dwight D. Eisenhower once said, leadership is the art of getting someone to do something you want done because he wants to do it. Having the strength to inspire strength in others is the hallmark of a commissioned officer. At this time, please direct your attention to the center screen for a special video. Congratulations, Ruby, on your commissioning. I know you're going to do bigger and better things every day, and I pray for your continued success. I love you. Hey, Maria, how you doing? Chief Williams, uh, I'm proud of you. Uh, congratulations on a job well done. I can't ever forget that day you walked into our classroom for freshman orientation uh, in a strange class in ROTC. I remember telling you, Maria, you're going to do good things in life. You, uh, you became a CO at Jackson High School, and now you're on to do bigger and better things. I expect you to do those things, Maria. I expect you to lead people, lead from the front, not from the rear. Again, I am so proud of you, and I look forward to seeing you very soon, young lady. You keep doing what you do, and I'll see you at the top. T. Williams out. Levi Bohannon, a.k.a. B-Man, congratulations on becoming a second lieutenant. You're going to be an amazing signal officer, and I just want to say thanks for being such an amazing friend here throughout my journey at GMC. You're going to do great things. I remember when I first met you, you were this shy, weird homeschool kid, and now you're just this super fit, beautiful leader. Hey, good luck at UNGB, man. Congratulations, Sully. We love you. Congratulations, Cal, on commissioning and becoming a second lieutenant. I'm very proud of you. Congratulations, Cap. I, I, I like you to come home and play football with me. I'm really proud of you, and I'm really excited to see where your future takes you. Congrats, Adriana. You finally made it after two long years. I'm very proud of you and all the effort and dedication you put in. I know how much this means to you, and I'm very excited to see where your future will take you. Hey, Gooden. I just wanted to say how proud I am of you for making it through GMC. You've been the best RC we could possibly ask for, and you and she's lucky to have you. You're going to be the best armor officer the Army's ever seen. You made a really big impact here, being the regimental commander. You kept the Corps appeased, led us through parades and everything that we've had to go through here. But most importantly, you've impacted people by being their friend. I'm going to miss all of our <laughs> spontaneous adventures together, but I'm sure more on the way in the future. This isn't goodbye for us. It'll just be see you later. Hello, good then. And I'm just me. Maybe <laughs> yeah, you know. And because um, my English, my English is not pretty well, I think. So I have to see my dress, or I will uh, forget what I want to say. And I miss you so much. I have heard that you were graduate from GMC and the Army of America. So I'm really proud of you. And I also want to say that thank you because. 
uh, you're my best friend in America, and when I was in America, you were taking me to experience many different things. And my favorite one is um, Six Flags, because I think that was so amazing, and I had I have now tried the facilities before. It's really good. And I also want to say um, I love you and Emily because you always took care of me and when I have some problems, you will uh, help me to solve that and encourage me. And I'm so happy that I can be your friend. Um, one day maybe we hope, I hope we can meet in the future. Love you. Hey Tuck, what's going on man? Congratulations on commissioning today. I'm super proud of you and you're gonna make an excellent aviation pilot and I'll see you soon. Go Bobcats. Hey baby, I'm so proud of you for completing this milestone in your life. You're going to do such amazing things and you're making a great officer. You've been there for me since day one and I'm so lucky to have you in my life. I love you. Haraway, you made it. You've been through many hardships and trials. And I'm happy that you finally got your commission to become the future Army Infantry 2nd Lieutenant. Here's my salute to you, sir. You do many great things in the Army, by the way. We're proud of you. Congratulations, you finally made it. I know you're super duper excited, but I also know that you're a little sad. The nostalgia that you have for this place, even though you have your good and your bad times here, I still say that you need to take both of them and push it for you achieve at Norwich and just be happy because you're the most studious, intelligent, freaking, you're just the most amazing person that I know. You taught me so much here and I know that you're going to teach those 50 plus people that you're going to be charged with later on. I know that you'll be great. You know I can cut it. Uh, congratulations, Nate, on commissioning. I always knew you could do it, man. Good job. Hi, Julian. Hi, Benny. Congrats on today. I am so proud of y'all. I know how hard y'all worked to get here, and I cannot wait to see you guys at GSU. Hey, Julian. Congratulations on commissioning. I am so proud of how far come over the years, and I cannot wait for what the future holds, and I'll be right by your side supporting you. Congratulations, Lopez. Proud of you, buddy. You've come a long way since JRTC. Hey Neos, congratulations on commissioning. You worked really hard this year and you deserve it. Congratulations to Ohawe and all other cadets who've earned your commission. Congratulations for commission. I'm absolutely so proud of you and I know you're going to go so far and you're going to do amazing things. Hey Papa Pettit, I'm only saying it because I know you hate it. But I want to let you know a couple things. I mean, despite me making fun of you for not hitting the gym as much as you could be, I'm so proud of you, regardless. A, for the person you've become to be, the respectable person, the respectable leader, and the fact that you are commissioning before me. I'm proud of you for everything else. Mm. Uh, I remember at minicamp, you were the first person I hit it off with. You put your heart to everything, and you truly tried to do your best. I remember our first FTX, and we were partners for Land Nav. I believe for the second one as well. I remember another FTX later in the year. I was the squad leader, and uh, you got shot by a paintball round. Your journey here at GMC has led you to this point, but it's only the beginning. I hope that you'll take everything from here, your friends, the lessons, and the memories, and so you can make a truly great career in the Army. Good luck out there, man. Hey, Reed. Is, is it going? Hey, Reed, it's Clement. I just want you to know I'm proud of you, buddy. I love you. You've always been a brother to me. I hope you know that my nose is, in fact, bigger than yours, and I hope this day goes amazing for you. Peace out. Hi, Rajon. Congratulations on your achievement. From all of us, your dad, your brothers, cousins, aunts, uncles, godparents, and grandparents, we are so proud of you. Congratulations again, son. Bye. Ladies and gentlemen, the Professor of Military Science for Georgia Military College, Lieutenant Colonel Russ Brown. My name is Brown, and I'm a proud U.S. Army soldier and member of Team GMC. 
Just want to thank you all today. Uh, some people ask, where does that pride come from? Well, you're looking at the leaders on the stage. Uh, this class has a special place in my heart. It's the first class I've been able to see all the way from their first entry here to Georgia Military College to now commissioning. And the maturation, the growth that I've seen has been amazing. And for the family and friends here, I hope you see the same. The person you see before you today on this stage is different. They're different because they're now taking that role of leadership of America's sons and daughters in defense of our nation. And that's where I get that pride. And I, I truly pray that they have the career in the military that they want and can serve as long as they want. At a certain point in your career, it's not about the status anymore. It's not about the cool things you get to do and train. It's about pure love. Love of this country and love of the soldiers on your left and right. And one person that epitomizes that, and I just have to say, what an authentic leader is joining us today as our guest speaker. Major General Andy Monera, the commanding general of U.S. Army Cadet Command, could have chosen anywhere. Could speak at any commissioning at any ROTC program in the nation. Many doing their commissionings today. He, cho he chose George Military College. And I think that says something about not only where our program is currently, where our program is going, and the products that we produce. Outstanding leaders to lead our nation and defend it in the future. So if you would, please help me welcome Major General Andy Manera. Thank you. No, thanks, thanks, Russ, for those kind words. So, cadets, bring those smiles back that you had when you were watching the video. Okay, it's a big day for you. All right. Hey, it, it's great to be here. Um, I have been able to do, it is commissioning season, um, and so I have been able to do quite a few commissionings. And one of the, th the first things I do at every commissioning is I gauge the level of enthusiasm of the crowd. Uh, and so this is who you're going to be compared against. So I started the season at my alma mater, Shippensburg University in Pennsylvania, so a small school, so what, they weren't very enthusiastic. Um, I did Louisville, University of Louisville, a little more enthusiasm there. I did the University of North Carolina, a little bit more enthusiasm there. And then, believe it or not, I did Morgan State in Baltimore, and there was a lot of enthusiasm at that college. And so I'm going to gauge it here. And so what, what do we say? We say, uh, start here. Go anywhere, is that what we say? All right, so I'm going to say start here, and then you all are going to say, you're going to blow them away with go anywhere, right? All right, ready? All right, start here. Go anywhere! All right, you win, absolutely. So, no, thank you. So, President Caldwell, uh, Rush, distinguished guests, family, friends of our newest group of officers, again, thank you for hosting me uh, here today. On this momentous occasion, I think it's the commissioning of 24 soon to be lieutenants from a historic institution, which I don't need to tell this stuff to you, but I, I am anyway, uh, but a long lineage of transitioning students in the leaders since 1879. That's, that's, that's a pretty big deal. And in fact, Georgia Military College has commissioned second lieutenants in the Army for over 71 years. Now, I live at Cadet Command at Fort Knox, and we keep all the records of commissionings, and, and our numbers couldn't go back 71 years. But I was able to go back 40 years, and I will tell you, in the last 40 years, Georgia Military College has produced 1,177 second lieutenants for our Army. So that's worth a round of applause. So again, it's, it's an honor to address you as we celebrate their achievements of these remarkable individuals who have decided to lead uh, in our nation. 
And so, but first and foremost, I want to take a special moment and thank the families and friends of these young men and women we are honoring today. The cadets' desire to serve can be attributed to your influence and guidance. Their core values were instilled in them long before they came to Georgia Military College. Without you, these cadets would not be standing here today. So cadets, round of applause that way. Oh, you can do better than that, come on. All right, awesome. To the faculty and staff of this great institution who have been charged with administering the curriculum, education, and preparing the cadets to be all they can be, and guiding them to be competent and innovative leaders, thank you. Thank you for the time, the knowledge, and the energy in preparing these future leaders for what lies ahead. So a round of applause for the cadre. So as I considered what to talk to you about today, um, I know that this is the second ceremony that you have sat through, and you did PT with me this morning, so it's probably about the third speech that you're getting, and some, like President Caldwell's got another one tonight, um, and so I know and I am the last, I'm what's standing between you and that gold bar, and I did reflect back on my commissioning some 31 or two years ago, um, and what I remember from that is not much. Um, I remember that my family was in the crowd. I remember my fiance was in the crowd, not my wife of 31 years. I do remember Sergeant First Class Dean Shane, who gave me my first salute. Uh, and the NCOs that were part of the program were absolutely the ones that inspired me to serve. So the NCOs that are part of the program here, thank you for all that you have done to inspire these, these young leaders. But I absolutely do not recall who was my guest speaker. And so 30 years from now, if you don't remember, or even 10 minutes from now, that, that's, that's quite okay. You need to relax. You guys are so rigid up there. Come on. <laughs> I did remember knowing that I was not a cadet anymore and about to embark on a journey in the Army, a journey much like the journey you are about to embark on that is full of opportunities to become the best version of yourself. You will wear that gold bar of a second lieutenant, a bar that is symbolic. It is the figurative bar by which all your actions will be judged. And it's weighty, that bar, because the standards have been set high. You will be required to uphold the Army values, to demonstrate integrity and honor in all that you do, and to be above reproach, which I know you've already learned that from the Georgia Military College. Most importantly, you will be leading America's sons and daughters. So if you take nothing else away from today, always remember that our nation is entrusting in you at a very young age to take care of our most precious resources, America's sons and daughters. Do not take that obligation lightly. Those are the standards by which Army leaders are held. And so as you embark on the journey, uh, if it's okay, if I can take about three or four minutes to provide you, is it okay? A few couple maxims to think about? Is it okay? You sure? <laughs> <laughs> All right, a few, a few maxims uh, that I'd like to talk to you about that will help you prepare you uh, to lead our soldiers. And I don't think any of them will be a surprise to you, and I will be surprised if you have not heard them before. So, but first and foremost, remember, the Army is a people business, and success is directly proportional to how well you know your soldiers and their families. Your soldiers, like I talked about earlier, are our most precious resource, and they are what give us the competitive edge over our adversaries. Your soldiers, they'll be interested, but they don't care how much you learn from this great institution or the institution that you're going to go on to next until they know how much they care, you care about them. Number two, leadership is absolutely a contact sport. Be an engaged leader. It is the best way to build trust. Trust, as we talked about during PT, is what? Anybody got it? We talked about during PT. The bedrock of our profession. Good, good job. <laughs> the invisible thread 
that binds our units together, enabling us to accomplish the impossible. It is the confidence that we place in our fellow soldiers to have our backs in the heat of battle, the reliance we have on our leaders to guide us through chaos, and the faith our nation has in our ability to protect and defend. An engaged leader builds trust, and you answered this right this morning, builds trust by providing a common purpose, leading from the front, and always sharing in tasks and hardships with your soldiers. Never ask your men and women to do something you have not done. Strive to do it well, but at the end of the day, they don't care how well you do it. They just care that you are doing it with them. And then this rem remarkable thing happens, because when you first show up your unit, you're going to be referred to as Lieutenant Armas, or the lieutenant, or the platoon leader. But once you have gained their trust, you will soon be referred to as my platoon leader, or my lieutenant. And so once you do that, your soldiers, your NCOs will have your back and they will make sure that you are successful in whatever you do and they will make sure that the mission is always successful. And remember, it is your mission to make your subordinates more successful than they thought they could be. Give them all the credit. Relish in their success not your own. Give them all the credit. You take all the blame and don't be afraid to make mistakes because after all, what are lieutenants really good at? They're really good at making mistakes and that's okay. That's how we learn. Create a culture where everybody is treated with dignity and respect and one that allows for open communication. And remember, feedback is absolutely a gift so strain to listen to your NCOs and soldiers and give them the opportunity to provide feedback. And so look at me for this one. All right, so use more of these and less of this. As a leader, you don't have to have all the solutions, just the ability to generate them. Don't be afraid to solicit those ideas from your soldiers your NCOs, and your peers. Seek mindful mentors. Solicit leaders, like your PMS, who inspire you and motivate you in your sergeant major. And look for leaders who spark something in you. Find those leaders who will push you beyond your limits because those are the leaders who will help you grow. Mentors should pour into you and you must be receptive when they are ready to give you feedback. So one of the most important aspects of mentorship will be the lessons that you learn about yourself. You have spent lots of time learning about our adversaries and the enemy. But knowing your enemy, and, mo and as important, is knowing yourself. And if you do that, you need not fear the results of a hundred battles. There'll be a quiz later if you know what the quote came from. So your integrity and character as a leader will be revealed in the most difficult moments of your life and career. And so in those most difficult moments, remember, here's another famous quote if you can figure out who said it, the world ain't sunshine and rainbows, and we learn and grow from significant hardships, emotional experiences, and repetition. The path ahead of you will be arduous, and challenging, filled with trials and tribulations that will test your character, your resolve, and your determination. But within these challenges lies the essence of our profession, the understanding that true strength is forged through adversity. It is through the crucible of hardship that we develop resilience, build cohesive teams, and the ability to overcome obstacles. So as you progress through your military career and beyond, and this is for everybody in the audience, always be an advocate for our Army. The leadership, 
the training and the experience gained through military service are second to none. Share the benefits of army service. Emphasize the commitment to something bigger than yourselves. The army is unparalleled in its, uh, its ability to unlock a person's full potential. So tell your army story whenever you can. And here's my last tip, and it's one you haven't been doing a good job of while you're sitting here. So finally, nobody wants a grumpy leader. So be positive. If you are having fun as a leader, your people will also. Your presence will exert influence, even as a young second lieutenant. Be certain to use that influence for the greater good. Your advice, your guidance, and your voice will carry weight. Okay, I'm going to wrap it up. Well, this is the last time you will hear the term cadet in front of your name. From now on, it will be lieutenant. And when you have proven to your NCOs and soldiers that you are one of them and you have gained their trust, they will affectionately refer to you as my platoon leader or my LT. Congratulations on all that you have accomplished and for that that you will accomplish at leaders, as leaders in our in nation's army. Best wishes on your upcoming educational endeavors. You still have to graduate another two years of school. Make sure that happens. Leadership excellence. Be all you can be. And again, start here, go anywhere. All right, thank you. General Mark Milley, Chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, once said, We are unique among armies. We are unique among militaries. We do not take an oath to a king or queen or tyrant or dictator. We do not take an oath to an individual. No, we do not take an oath to a country, a tribe, or a religion. We take an oath to the Constitution. By raising their right hand today, these leaders are signing up knowing the responsibility that comes with defending our nation and the selflessness required to lead America's sons and daughters. Major General Andy Manera will now move forward to administer the oath of commission officers. All right, on your feet. Raise your right hand and repeat after me. I state your name. I state your name. Having been appointed an officer in the United States Army. Having been appointed an officer in the United States Army. In the rank of second lieutenant. In the rank of second lieutenant. To solemnly swear or affirm. That I will support and defend the Constitution of the United States against all enemies, against all enemies foreign, and foreign and domestic. That I will, I'm sorry, that I will bear true faith, that I will bear true faith and, allegiance and allegiance to the same. That I take this obligation freely, this obligation freely without mental reservation or purpose of evasion, and that I well and faithfully discharge the duties of the office I am about to enter. So help me God. All right, congratulations. All right, round of applause. Placement of rank at military commissioning and promotion ceremonies symbolizes the special trust and confidence in the patriotism, valor, fidelity, and the leadership placed upon each individual selected for commission by the President of the United States and their military leaders. In addition, and of greater importance, it represents the individual's demonstrated potential for increased responsibility within the profession of arms. Please hold all applause until the end of each respective pinning and salute. 
Our first lieutenant is Lieutenant Ruby Armis. Lieutenant Armis has selected her mother, Juana Benitez, sister, Brianna, and niece, Serenity, for this honor. Following the pinning of the rank on the uniform, it is a long-standing standing tradition that the new lieutenant receives a salute from a currently serving or former service member, junior in rank chosen by the second lieutenant. This salute is a show of respect and the indifference in the, to their rank, to a tradition of a newly appointed officer giving a silver dollar, silver dollar to the first enlisted person to salute him or her after being commissioned will be honored today. Second Lieutenant Armis, first salute is given by Sergeant First Class Rosemary Robeson. Lieutenant Armis is a native of Naples, Florida. She will be attending the University of South Florida in Tampa, Florida to continue her education. <laughs> Lieutenant Maria Batista. Second Lieutenant Maria Batista has selected her father, Jesus, and brother, Jehu Batista, for the honor of pinning her. Second Lieutenant Batista's first salute will be from Chief Petty Officer Retired, Vincent Williams. Oh. Second Lieutenant Batista is a native of Jackson, Georgia. She will attend Mercer University in Macon to continue her education. Second Lieutenant Levi Bohannon. Second Lieutenant Levi Bohannon has selected his parents, John and Jody Bohannon, for the honor of pinning him. Second Lieutenant Bohannon's first salute will be given by his grandfather, Hospital Corpsman, third class, retired Glenn Bohannon. Second Lieutenant Bohannon is a native of Clarksville, Georgia. He will attend the University of North Georgia to continue his education. Second Lieutenant Sullivan Duffy. Second Lieutenant Su Sullivan Duffy has selected his parents, Ryan and Jenny Duffy, for the honor of pinning him. Second Lieutenant, Second Lieutenant Duffy's first salute will be from Sergeant First Class Dennis Porter. <laughs> so 
Präsident, darf ich uns. Lieutenant Duffy is a native of Grand Rapids, Michigan. He will attend Michigan State University to continue his education. Second Lieutenant Kylan Duncan. Second Lieutenant Kylan Duncan has selected his grandfather, Staff Sergeant Retired James Brown, and Captain Darius Pustel the honor of pinning him. Second Lieutenant Duncan's first salute will be from Staff Sergeant Trey Powell. Second Lieutenant Duncan is a native of Thomasville, Georgia. He will attend Georgia State University to continue his education. Second Lieutenant Charles Duru has selected his parents, Joseph Duru and Dr. Trisha Duru, for the honor of pinning him. Second Lieutenant Duru's first salute will be from his former JROTC instructor, Command Sergeant Major Retired, Caper C. Williams. Second Lieutenant Duru is a native of Dallas, Georgia, and originally from Nigeria. He will attend the University of North Georgia to continue his education. <laughs> Second Lieutenant Adriana Floyd has selected her parents, First Sergeant Retired Anthony Floyd and Adrian Wilder, for the honor of pinning her. Second Lieutenant Floyd's first salute will be by her father. Sec <laughs> Second Lieutenant Floyd is a native of Atlanta, Georgia. She will attend Georgia Southern University to continue her education. Second Lieutenant Tucker Gilbert. Second Lieutenant Tucker Gilbert has selected his father, Gary Gilbert, and his brother, Lieutenant Jake Gilbert, the honor of pinning him. <clears throat> Second Lieutenant Gilbert's first salute will be from Sergeant First Class Dennis Porter. Second Lieutenant uh, Gilbert is a Georgia College and State University graduate and a native of Evans, Georgia. He will conduct basic officer leaders course at Fort Novoso <laughs> to prepare for his career in active duty aviation. <laughs> Second Lieutenant
Second Lieutenant Grace Gooden. Second Lieutenant Grace Gooden has selected Second Lieutenant Nicolette Fazikas and Major Retired Ben Carrick the honor of pinning her. Second Lieutenant Gooden's first salute will be by Corps Ta the Corps TAC Officer, Staff Sergeant Retired Paul Delecto. Second Lieutenant Gooden is a native of Louisville, Kentucky. She will attend the University of North Georgia to continue her education. <laughs> Second Lieutenant Stanley Griffin. Second Lieutenant Stanley Griffin has selected Major Jared Smith and Lieutenant Bradley Aspler for the honor of pinning him. <laughs> Second Lieutenant Griffin's first salute will be by his brother, Sergeant James Griffin. Second Lieutenant Griffin is a native of Melbourne, Georgia. He will attend the University of North Georgia to continue his education. <laughs> Second Lieutenant Patrick Haraway. Second Lieutenant Patrick Haraway has selected his grandfather, Doug Haraway, and father, Steve Haraway, for the honor of pinning him. Second Lieutenant Haraway's first salute will be given by 48th Infantry Brigade Combat Team Senior Enlisted Leader, Command Sergeant Major Ray Kinney. Second Lieutenant Haraway is a native of Ma Mapleton, Georgia. He will attend the University of Northern Georgia to continue his education. Second Lieutenant Gabriel Hernandez. Second Lieutenant Gabrielle Hernandez has selected her parents, Joy and Ignacio Hernandez, for the honor of pinning her. Second Lieutenant Hernandez's first salute will be given by her uncle, Sergeant Retired Larry Hutzel. Second Lieutenant Hernandez is a native of Tampa, Florida. She will attend Norwich University in Vermont to continue her education. Second Lieutenant Nicholas Kennedy. Second Lieutenant Nicholas Kennedy has selected his parents, Susan and Michael Kennedy, for the honor of pinning him. I will have the honor of giving 
uh, Second Lieutenant Kennedy's first salute. Second Lieutenant Kennedy is a native of Columbus, Ohio. He will attend Bowling Green State University to continue his education. Second Lieutenant Benny Cook. Second Lieutenant Benny Cook has selected his parents, Doug Cook and Laura Lohner, for the honor of pinning him. Second Lieutenant Cook's first salute will be by longtime friend, Sergeant Zachary Massa Myers. Second Lieutenant Cook is a native of Pecatonica, Illinois. He will attend Georgia Southern University to continue his education. Second Lieutenant Julian Lindsay. Second Lieutenant Julian Lindsay has selected his parents, Sergeant First Class Retired Jay and Birgit Lindsay, for the honor of pinning him. <clears throat> Second Lieutenant Lindsay will receive his first salute from his father. Second Lieutenant Lindsay is a native of Augusta, Georgia. He will attend the University of North Georgia to continue his education. <laughs> Second Lieutenant Elijah Lopez. Second Lieutenant Elijah Lopez has selected his sister Abigail and girlfriend Abigail Bessler for the honor of pinning him. His sister Abby is pinning his rank on him in place of Captain Ulysses Nunez, who unfortunately passed away and could not make it today. Second Lieutenant Lopez's first salute will be given by his friend, Sergeant Bonnie Stewart. Second Lieutenant Lopez is a graduate of Georgia College and State University and a native of New York, New York. He plans to branch aviation in the Army National Guard. Second Lieutenant Camille McMillian. Second Lieutenant Camille McMillian has selected her parents, Miriam McMillian and Vernon McMillian, for the honor of pinning her. Second Lieutenant McMillian's first salute will be given by Sergeant First Class Dennis Porter. Second Lieutenant McMillian is a native of Kanaoe, Hawaii. She will attend Hawaii Pacific University to continue her education.
Second Lieutenant Norberto Nieves. Second Lieutenant Norberto Nieves has selected his father, Air Force Master Sergeant Norberto Nieves, and his sister, Petty Officer Second Class Norielis Nieves, for the honor of pinning him. That's a tongue twister. Second Lieutenant Nieves, first salute will be given by his father. Second Lieutenant Nieves is a native of Rockledge, Florida. He will attend the University of North Georgia to continue his education. <laughs> Second Lieutenant David Akawe. Second Lieutenant David Akawe has selected Sergeant First Class Rosemary Roberson and Staff Sergeant Kayshawn Gallimore for the honor of pinning him. <laughs> Be people. Second Lieutenant Kawe's first salute will be given by Staff Sergeant Gallimore. Second Lieutenant Kawe is a native of Lawrenceville, Georgia. He will attend Georgia State University to continue his education. Second Lieutenant Joseph Pacheco. Second Lieutenant Joseph Pacheco has selected his mother, Michelle Pacheco, and sister, Alexis Pacheco, for the honor of pinning him. Second Lieutenant Pacheco's first salute will be given by his father, Senior Airman Retired Joseph Pacheco, Jr. Second L Lieutenant Pacheco is a native of Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. He will attend Syracuse University to continue his education. <laughs> Second Lieutenant Julian Pereira. Second Lieutenant Julian Pereira has selected his mother, Maria Lopez, and father, Julian Pereira, for the honor of pinning him. Second, Second Lieutenant Pereira will receive his first salute from Specialist Key Amber Edwards. Second Lieutenant Pereira is a native of Naples, Florida. He will attend Georgia Southern University to continue his education. <laughs> Second Lieutenant William Pettit. 
Second Lieutenant William Pettit has selected his mother, Nydia Pettit, and brother Charles Pettit for the honor of pinning him. Second Lieutenant Pettit's first salute will be given by Corps, Ta Corps, Corps TAC Officer, Staff Sergeant Retired Paul Delecto. Second Lieutenant Pettit is a native of Cove, Oregon. He will attend Idaho State University to continue his education. Second Lieutenant Jacob Reed. Second Lieutenant Jacob Reed has selected close friends Gunnar Starr and Cadet Miles Clement for the honor of pinning him. Second Lieutenant Reed will receive his first salute from his father, Staff Sergeant, retired Joseph Reed. Lieutenant Reed is a native of Thompson, Connecticut. He will attend Norwich University in Vermont to continue his education. And last but not least, Second Lieutenant Rajon Rose. Second Lieutenant Rajon Rose has selected his parents, Dr. Andrea Rose and Martin Rose, for the honor of pinning him. Second Lieutenant Rose will receive his first salute from Petty Officer 3rd Class Thomas Truss. Second Lieutenant Rose is a native of Conyers, Georgia. He will attend Georgia State University to further his education. Ladies and gentlemen, the newest second lieutenants in the United States Army. You're allowed to smile. You can smile. Congratulations to all of our new lieutenants. All will receive a copy of their commissioning certificate, a copy of the U.S. Constitution, a set of second, second lieutenant gold bars and U.S. insignia, and personal messages from the professor of military science, Lieutenant Colonel Russ Brown, and myself, Chief Military Science Instructor, Sergeant Major Andrew Porch. Please rise for the playing of the Army song and remain standing for the benediction given by Chaplain David Luke.
Well, after about 18 years of chaplaincy, I discovered today, sir, that the 50 cal is not the most powerful weapon. It's a little sister. <laughs> Only second to that, a little brother. Now, to every mother that teared up, you have the chaplain permission to cry. We teach our men and women in uniform not to emote. But you know, when the enemy approaches us, it's not how fast we ran the mile, how many push-ups we did in a minute, how many times we got through the conditioning in the early mornings, in the rain, and the cold. It's a resolve that's found inside of us. A story that's found in the Bible, in 1 Samuel the third chapter, the Battle of Ziklag. David was a leader and he returned to camp to only to find the camp had been burned and all of their possessions taken, including their families. In that moment when David was in attempt to be a great leader, everyone he was leading turned on him. He turned to God. And God didn't send him more troops, didn't tell him which weapon tree to use, but he told him to encourage himself. So as you leave today as second lieutenants, I want to ask you to use these three E's to lead your troops, to engage them, to remember to inquire to a higher power, and always remember to encourage yourself. That's what the battle is truly won. Let us pray. Lord, I thank you again for allowing us to be a part of their lives as they go out to change other lives. Let them be the light for someone who's lost in darkness. Let the skills they've learned in land nav situations become second only to them inquiring unto you. We thank you publicly and privately for all that you've ensured us with. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Will the cadre of the MSD department and the official party please join our new lieutenants on stage for an official photo? Please be seated, I'm sorry. Almost done. Finally, on behalf of the Georgia Military College Alumni Association and their president, Edwin Emmerman, there is a gift for each new lieutenant. You will receive a Georgia Military College Guide On flag as a token of appreciation from your alumni association. Display this flag with pride as you continue your education in your military service. Please stop by the alumni table upstairs at the reception to receive your alumni gift. Ladies and gentlemen, this concludes the spring 2023 Georgia Military College commissioning ceremony. We thank you for attending and would like to invite our newest lieutenants, family, friends, and distinguished guests for a reception in the upstairs atrium. Thank you again so much. <laughs>